After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. Taken in at the three. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. These offensive starters still out there in the second quarter. You would think the plan's for them to at least play into the third quarter, if not all the way through. Yeah, it might go by feel. If they have a really good first drive to start the third quarter, they might pull them after that. If not, might leave them out there a little bit longer, but I'll guarantee this, they'll be gone by the start of the fourth quarter. So instead of fourth down, first down. Well, so much for winning the down, you put a lot of emphasis on because third down is key for offense and defense. Instead, you're going to stay on the field and start a new set of downs. After the penalty, it's Mixon, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Now the Bengals are going to use the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. You know, last week I remember asking you, what would an offensive coordinator be looking for week two of the preseason? Now we're in week three. Defensive coordinator-wise, what's he looking at? For the most part in preseason, you're playing pretty basic stuff, pretty vanilla defenses. You're looking for guys that play with abandon, that just go out and make plays. You kind of let their athletic ability take over in order for you to notice them. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive, as this is third and ten. Now it's Burrow. And they are able to stop it, but he does take it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And the deliver there is that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up for the first and goal. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before. Give it to Mixon, and he pulls his way into the end zone for a Bengal touchdown. Joe Mixon taking it in from two yards out, and the Bengals are able to move back in front. We got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space, but how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything. 